Alright guys, welcome back. This is uh, Brazilian Nick, and I am sitting off of uh, 3 4 right here at Seattle uh, in part 3 of our PMDG Jetstream tutorial flight. Uh, like I said, I'm sitting off of 3 4 right. I'm getting ready to take off from Seattle for departure. I'm going to fly a runway heading, uh, I should say, turn to 344. Once we did intercept the 341 radio from Seattle, things are not going to play all that stuff. I'm going to go 344, fly a couple miles, then I'm going to hang a left and come back around to intercept Normie and head on out to uh, Cali Spiel Glacier International an Airport I've never flown to, uh, but my VA flies to with a Dash 8 U400, uh, which I just don't like that plane, so I'm flying my lovely bird, the Jetstream 41. Uh, we're set up, got the FMC uh, set. Uh, I've already hit the tow claws. We are good to go here. Uh, lights, lights, good to go. It's time to take off, so I'm going to taxi in position. And once again, this plane gets pretty loud as uh, the engines spool up, which is cool, but it's also bad because I have to almost yell into my microphone for you guys to probably hear me right now, which is all right. So uh, the key on this uh, takeoff here is to not exceed and burn up the engines uh, with your EGT. So pay attention to your EGT at all times uh, during your flight envelope. You do not want to blow up an engine I am way off to the right here. There we go. Let's get over a little bit. And we are set. So I'm going to go ahead and take off. So I'm going to set my press. Like I said, this thing's going to swoop all over the place here this afternoon at one time. 99% thrust. Really don't need a whole lot more than this. i to take off. 80 knots, check. Uh, we're coming up on V1 and V2. V1, rotate, so I'm going to rotate up. Ooh. Kick a little bit more on the trim. Let's get this a little bit. Positive rate, so that's going to be gear up. And I'm going to climb. 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 When I said turn to the left, I meant turn to the right. That was all screwed up. Now we are climbing here. Uh, radar altimeter says we're 800, 900 some feet now. So we are good. Positive rate of climb, 2200. This, uh, this plane's slow. Uh, there's no doubt about it. This is not uh, the fastest thing in the world, and I'm okay with it because it is an absolute joy to fly. It's a real joy to hand fly. Lots of houses and things like that. Off to the right. Uh, houses and things like that off to the left. So I'll, now I'm going to kick it. I'm going to change my range here. And we're going to kick it and hang a right and head off to Normandy before I come up across the city and piss some people off by flying around. So I really need to drop the nose a bit and accelerate past 170 knots. Go ahead and pull my flaps up. It was at nine. Okay. My yoke shortcut here. And as I said before, uh, it's going to dip. Uh, There's a lot of lift that's generated by that uh, flaps nine. So now we immediately start to accelerate past uh, 170, uh, which is really the minimum speed you want to hold uh, in normal flight, especially climbing and cruise. Right hand turn until I come up. My friend Richard Trumper, thank you. Fraps, I love you too. I have a ton of uh, traffic and everything else turned on. I probably got nine or ten programs in the background, as well as uploading uh, part one of this tutorial right now uh, onto YouTube. So everything's taken up space. Now we're going to intercept uh, Normie, which is about 21 miles out, as per the uh, electronic HSI. As you see, we're about to climb through 5,000. Like I said, this plane is an absolute joy to hand fly. And I'm probably just going to hand fly this thing up to about 10,000. But I'm going to get the uh, autopilot set up for this first. So I'm going to click on. Uh, 
altitude select. I'm not on an intercept course uh, for the, uh, the nav yet, so I'll pull with that. Uh, altitude, and that's going to give me an altitude uh, select. So altitude select is I'm going to use the vertical speed to select a vertical speed to hold until it reaches that altitude. So with the B speed on, it's going to click at the 2000, which is what I was set at. If I left click on the uh, little button down here under the center pedestal, it's going to drop down from the speed. This plane is not the uh, fastest, nor is it the fastest climbing in the world. Uh, so I'm going to set it about 1500 and let it go. This is definitely not a, uh, a Learjet. There we go. So now I have that set to cap. Obviously, I have not engaged anything. In order to engage the autopilot, you click on the autopilot button, which is this one. Down here on the center pedestal, uh, just above the uh, rudder trim and just to the right of the vertical speed cylinder. Always watching my EGT, making sure that I'm not uh, over exceeding anything or burning anything. As you can see, I'm climbing at a, a whopping 88% of uh, the engine torque, so 99% flow, 1,700 an hour or something like that. Like I said earlier, it's about 2,000 pounds, which you need to, to shoot for uh, within the first hour of burn. If I'm not mistaken, then it's something like 1,200, 1,300 for uh, every hour past that, although you can't get it underneath that 1,200 uh, setting up in the uh, condition. Coming up on 8,800 here, and from here, it's at Probably kick this off onto autopilot and go through a couple other things until we reach the cruise, and then we will go through setting up for the, uh, the cruise portion of the flight. So. Well, we're coming up 11 and a half miles. As you can see, the vertical speed indicator on my tape here showing that we're approximately 1,800 feet per uh, minute up. This magenta, or cyan one, is for the autopilot. That's also for the autopilot. LNAV has been selected, vertical speed. Um, been selected. That was the uh, VYSD. Currently holding 182 knots at uh, roughly, I don't know, was that 890 degrees pitch, something like that, 80 degrees. HSI is in LNAV mode. 9.3 miles to one, which is my next fix. I don't have any headings selected. Estimated time, I don't care. Switch that back to the speed. The track of that is about 77 versus, you can tell that too. Ground speed, 238 knots. So obviously we're above 10,000 feet. We'll go ahead and kick off the uh, landing lights. Uh, usually after 170 knots, you're going to go through the takeoff checklist. The takeoff checklist is uh, Gear up, uh, flaps up, altimeter set. I'm going to go ahead and knock on to the autopilot. Now they're above 10,000. As you see, bam, and it's going to turn here a little bit to, to get to where it's going. External view of the plane, as you can tell, uh, we are flying uh, out of Seattle. Just behind us, all the goodies back there. Uh, Plane is cleaned up. We're not dirty anymore. Nice and beautiful. It's a great looking plane. I thought it was kind of ugly at first, like a lot of people, but the more I flew it, the more I came to appreciate the, the look and the ruggedness and the way it's designed. It's a, it's a pretty epic and awesome thing. And once again, we come across that uh, the sound bug. And I, I wish PMDG or someone would fix this. Maybe there's a fix out there. I don't know about if that's the case. So please go ahead and post down below in the comment section. Um, I'm going to fast forward this to uh, the point get set up in over speed conditions or anything like that. Cruise, and then we will go through setting up the, uh, the cruise portion of the uh, power management to get this set up for the perfect cruise speed uh, that we don't get. All right, guys, a couple thousand feet later here, and uh, we're getting closer to our cruise of uh, 21,000. It's uh, almost 17 to drop the pitch of it because we are losing the speed. So I'm going to kick that down to about uh, 1,500. 
thousand feet there. That'll bring our speed back up. Let's talk about the uh, the engine gauges here before we come up to our cruise. We'll just wait for that cruise to, to ding in our ear. Beep. So, uh, basically, how this works is, is if I advance this throttle, those little EGT things are going to go green. That's bad. I don't want to do that. I do not want to hit the green. Uh, it is very touchy, very precise, and very smooth, as you can see, as far as the uh, the movement of the steam gauge and the LEDs behind it. Uh, how we're going to work this is, when I get up to, uh, to cruise, in order to set it for the perfect cruise speed, I'm going to power down until the EGT, the green uh, EGT symbol, whatever we want to call it, the indicator here, is going to be sitting on this white. I don't know. I guess I can zoom a little more, right? On this white little bar right here. When it's sitting on that bar, then I can adjust the, uh, the propeller condition until the EGT gets up to the orange bar, and then I'm going to drop the power bar just a little bit. Uh, until it's about on this uh, second white bar, or in between there. And you can play with it and finagle a little bit to hold whatever speed you need to be at. But uh, this way the plane won't just sit and accelerate all day. This will give you a good amount of uh, fuel flow reduction and fuel savings. Uh, so once again, what I'm going to do is when I come up to cruise, I'm going to reduce the throttle, reduce power, so the EGT indicator is sitting on the bottom white hash mark, the line right here. Um, so I hope everyone's watching in 1080p so you can actually see this thing on your screen, screen, on full screen. And then once it's on there, I'm going to adjust the propeller pitch, or the, I'm sorry, the propeller condition, until the EGT climbs to around the, uh, the orange hash mark, which is the, the absolute limit you need to be at. I'm going to drop the power just a little bit to, uh, to be about at this second hash mark, or in between that second white hash mark and the uh, the orange uh, don't pass. Uh, at that point, we will be uh, set up on a perfect cruise. And I need to drop my speed again. I need to hold about 170 at least. So, going to be another minute or two. I'm okay with that, and I'm sure you're okay with that, because you're watching. Uh, you're happy I didn't put any uh, death metal or crazy techno or something on this video, right? Like I did on some of the videos. But there's the beep, and so that lets us know, of course, that we are coming up on our cruise altitude. And what's going to happen is, when it hits that cruise altitude, your autopilot's going to go from BS on, and altitude select, to altitude hold on right here. And, of course, it'll change on the... Uh, attitude indicator as well. Some uh, nice little mountains over here. I don't think, uh, I'm not sure Orbex goes out this far. Uh, I have not purchased the, uh, the Rockies uh, yet, although I need to after watching some videos of it in action. I have uh, the Alaska and the Fjords. And they're flipping amazing. That's, that's cool there. Go ahead. Should have come turn Max back up or whatever. Let's worry about it. So. You're going to see that this plane is, uh, like I said before, it is not the fastest thing. Uh, we'll be happy doing, you know, 320, 350, somewhere in their ground speed. At best. At best. Probably not even close to that. Luckily, we don't have a headwind, so that is a good thing, or a tailwind, or any wind at that matter, because this plane uh, gets bounced around a lot when it comes to that uh, weather. So here we are. As you see, it has now switched from uh, altitude select and vertical speed to altitude uh, hold on, which is good, which is where we want to be. So now it's going to accelerate a little bit, because now we're coming up in a straight line. So I'm going to give it a second here to uh, probably get up to about 200, and then I'm going to start playing with my condition leader and the, uh, the power setting.
to get the boat to hold for uh, the cruise. Because this plane does not have an auto throttle or a VNAV system, this is what you have to do. So, but the engineers were smart. So, first thing, like I said, we're going to reduce the power. And it doesn't take a whole lot to get this thing to move. It is very, very smooth and very precise. You should see all of the dials. A little bit more. Come on. That's probably too much. That's why we it's very precise. That's, That's about right. So now I'm going to use my uh, addition levers. They're kind of jumpy on my SciTech. I have not set them up in FSU IPC, which I probably need to, because they're jumpy. You see. So I'm bringing the condition lever down and feathering it. It's about right the gate. I'm going to drop the power slow. That's really too much. So now, we are sitting at a uh, pretty decent cruise speed. I'm going to increase the power a little bit because we're dropping. Like I said, you, you kind of have to play with it a little bit, but uh, that's the general uh, rule of thumb here, is that it's power down to the hash, adjust the uh, condition lever of the, the propellers, and then set it again uh, via power. As you can see, we were sitting at you know, 1,400 or so uh, fuel flow uh, use between both engines, and now we're sitting at under 1,000, so that's a pretty significant uh, change that, and you don't have to do this, uh, but this is just the way uh, it's supposed to be. So, as you can see, they've modeled everything very well. It's all very crisp. 3D gauges. This is what they use as a test bed for the uh, NGX, and that is good. So, I will see you in the next part, which will cover uh, descent up into uh, the approach, so we'll start the descent, we'll probably go through a little bit of that, and fly the approach and landing, uh, and then an extra one for maybe shut down or something. We'll see how it uh, rolls out, how much time it cranks in. I don't like making super, super long videos, uh, so like 20 minutes apart, as it is now. I wouldn't want to sit down through that without a beer, so. Anyhow, this is Brazilian Nick, signing off.